so, Daddy. It's almost the end of my first term at St. Tertius. Tomorrow there's the carol service, and then all the other girls go home. I suppose I should be feeling really Christmassy, but in fact I'm rather Miz. Things wouldn't be quite so bad if we'd been allowed to write to one another. Though, of course, I do understand about your mission and the need for everything to be top secret. But I've been so worried about you. I keep wondering where you are and if you're quite safe. I hope your adventures have been less hair-raising than mine. The term has simply flown. Is it really three months ago since we were at home together? You just can't imagine how awful I felt, the idea of being a new girl. You'll like it at St. Ursula's, never fear. It's ridiculously lovely there. The house is so much older than this place. There's even a secret passage. Oh? Yes, runs out of the old girl's dormitory, apparently. Old girl's dormitory? Sounds awful, like a prison. Yes, I have to press a hidden button somewhere in the panelling. And then, lo and behold, the whole affair slides back. How very romantic. Things won't be so bad, I promise you. St. Ursula is a jolly fine school. And as for the headmistress, Mr. Veen, well. Well, what, Daddy? I seem to remember hearing this before. I think you like her rather a lot. Well, she's a down attractive woman, certainly. Though pretty strict mind, I told her clearly that with you having no mother and me being away so much of the time, you were growing into a young savage. Daddy! <laughs> Still, I expect she'll enjoy knocking you into shape. Good morning. Good morning, sir. A single to Cotley for my daughter and a single to London for me, first class. That'll be 12 and six months, please, sir. That's 76 and change, sir. He's got plenty of medals and the VC. My dad's only a clergyman. Well, I say only, he's a bishop, actually. Isn't it awful him having such a scapegrace for a daughter? Miss Prosser, our second mistress, is always saying, I wonder what your father, the bishop, would think of your conduct. She doesn't know, Dad, or she wouldn't talk in that stupid way. Now, Mr. Veen. Oh, yes. What about Mr. Veen? She nice. Nice. My dear, she's positive heaven. Ah, uh, here we are. Did I see two school hats? I thought I did. Hilary Marchant. How would you do, Hilary? Perhaps you'd be good enough to show my little girl the ropes. Rather. I'm not your little girl, Daddy. I'm nearly 15. I know, I know. Now, remember what I said. You're bound to find school very different from home, but persevere. I suppose it's like the army, really. You may not like your officers, but it's your duty as one of the rank and file to obey orders. And if you get into a scrape, own up and take the consequences. And above all, never, never tell a lie. I'll be in touch as soon as I can. You'll be back by Christmas. You will, Daddy. You will. You promise. I promise. Bye-bye, Daddy. -bye, I just wondered what you were doing. Oh, keeping yourself to the itself, you understand? As we fall form as can. Get out! I bag that slipper I'm having it. Oh, no, you're not. Ow, you're hurting me, actually. I meant to be hurting you, baby dear, because you're a nasty, rowdy little toad. Just you cool your heels in there. You know I can just be able to get so you're not going to take form yet. Jennifer? Yep, got to be cool to be kind, don't you know? In here, Hillary said your place. So 
what do you think we are? We're not twins. Quite right, old thing, we're not. Though we look the same. Speak the same. Devour the same chocolates. And all sorts of other things. But mostly chocolates, especially ones like those. I didn't even thank Daddy for these. Heat at the moment, he'll understand. Good heavens, what's that? I really don't know. Family heirloom, what? Obviously intended as a surprise gift. Have one. Mmm, scrumptious. Good to be getting back, old thing. Rather. dormitory? Yes. You couldn't take me, could you? I don't know the way. Nor do I. Excuse me. Would you know the way to Nightingale dorm, please? Up there. First on the right. Thank you. You're not supposed to be in there during the day. But I expect it's all right, since you're new. Did you want to come to this school? Not particularly. No, me. I took the examination. I presume it was passed. You must be frightfully clever. Yes, I am. Hurry up, teasing her, Jeff. What's the matter with her? Oh, new girl. I should leave her alone. She'll get over it. Come on. Oh, don't go. Don't leave me. Hilary, she's terrified. Don't you want any tea? I'll be along in a minute. You're mad. Lots of them are like this at first. And Prosy Prosser gets awfully ratty if we're late in. think you're doing? Come to have my tea. Your name? Alison Dane. Ah. So nice to know Miss Dane deigns to honour us with her presence. <laughs> Do you always come into school tea this late? I've never been to school before. I've always had a tutor at home. Good heavens. Write out 50 times, punctuality is the politeness of kings. Now what do you think you're doing? Stand up immediately. You haven't said grace. For what I'm about to receive. For what I'm about to receive. May the Lord make me truly thankful. Amen. May the Lord make me truly thankful. Amen. Golly, isn't Prosy detestable heathenish bore? Fancy punishing a new girl who's five minutes late for tea. It's ridiculous. She doesn't like me. It's pretty plain to see. Oh, Daddy, you can't imagine. 
imagine how delighted I am to have met Hilary and Jen. I'm missing you already, of course. And that's why I've started writing this diary, or log as you call it. Tomorrow, after assembly, I will be meeting Mr. Veen. I'm afraid, despite what you said about her, I'm not looking forward to the occasion. Still, she couldn't possibly be any worse than Miss Prosser. Ah, Alison Dane. Inside, please. The Dane girl is here, Mr. Veen. Welcome to St. Ursula's. Now, why don't you come and sit by me? Thank you. Maud tells me that you've already been kind to her. That is excellent. Miss Prosser, my second mistress, on the other hand, affirms that it has made you late for tea. Now, you would not, I'm sure, wish to start your school career on the wrong foot. No. Say no, Mr. Veen, when you speak to your headmistress. No, Mr. Veen. Excellent. Maud, as a scholarship girl, you may find boarding school a little different at first. But I'm sure Alison will always be ready with a helping hand. I trust you'll both have a happy stay with us. Have you seen her, Mr. Veen? Yes. Isn't she divine? Silence. Look in your Langworth at Dickinson's at page 31. We have two new girls in our mathematics lesson this morning. Maud Willison and Alison Dane. Alison Dane, be so good as to come up here to the blackboard. Kindly copy out and solve for us the algebraic problem number 14. Yes, Miss Prosser. Are you speaking to me? No, Miss Prosser. In that case, don't speak at all. Now then, Alison. Well? Sorry, Miss Prosser. I can't do it. Return to your place. It's disgraceful that a girl of your age should be so backward. Read? Learn and inwardly digest the whole page and report to me before bell tomorrow morning. Maud, show her, please. I shouldn't think our people are exactly born to the purple. So, what about it? She can do maths like some sort of machine. She's got a crush on you and it's going to mean trouble. Good heavens! Don't look now, but she's right behind us. Golly, what a cheat! I'll speak to her. No, run! Shoulder level. I'm never going to understand all this. 
You weren't doing that right. Why, how do you expect me to do it, you frabjous idiot? Like this. Golly! I say, wait a moment, Maud. How do you manage to be such a desperate ace at hockey? I didn't know they'd ever heard of the game up north. Didn't you? Well, you know now. I'll be back in a There, girl. Miss Prosser, I. I thought. Thought what? Nothing. Oh, I'm not surprised. Did you not know that girls are forbidden to enter the dormitories during the day? If you're at a loose end, go and tidy out the lost property cupboard next to the staff room. Report to me when you've finished. And Alison Dane. Yes, Miss Prosser. I don't like suspicious and furtive natures. What have you got in your hand? This one, Miss Prosser. No, the clenched one. has gone by since I saw that sinister man in the telephone box. I thought there was nothing more to worry about. Last week, however, something happened to convince me that I must still be on my guard at all times. Hilary, Jen and I decided to go for a nature ramble through the woods. Jen said she knew them like the back of her hand. We set off later than planned, as it had rained non-stop for most of the day. Idiots we are. Oh, do shut up, Jen. Dear Scrub, she's gripping Miss Marriott, so there are still wild panthers to be found in the fields above the woods. I want to sluice one down and give it to her. God, it does the air feel good. Mmm, I love that smell of damp leaves. Do you know, I think the woods look even nice at this time of year. figures flitting from chamber to chamber. Don't believe you. Let's go down and explore. Better not. Yes, it's amazing how quickly dust gets into these woods at this time of year. I'm not wishing to sound feeble, but do you think we ought to start back? We could try the shortcut. Topping idea. Where does it go? Straight across there, through the trees. <laughs> Sooner or 
later, one tree begins to look like another. Don't worry, we can't be all that far away now. trying to say something. All right. We're lost. I thought so. What do we do now? Actually, isn't that the sound of a car? Gracious, the girls are marvel. There must be a road down there. Yes, who are you? What do you want? I say, we're awfully sorry, but could you give us a lift? Hang on a mo, Jen. Do you think we ought to? Oh, shut up, Phil. We're lost, you see, and we have to get back to St. Ursula's, our school. But certainly, my dear child. Get in, all of you, quickly, before our English rain comes down. We shall be most happy to take you anywhere you wish to go. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this is most opportune, since we are ourselves looking for that very school. Uh, what did you say the name was, Major? St. Ursula's. Uh, St. Ursula's, yes, of course, of course. Excellent, excellent. Does this seem to be the direction? Yes. I think this is it. Why do you want to go to our school? Ah, now that is a very interesting question. The brigadier here knows very well the father of one of your girls. Really? They were together at the war office for a short time on the, what do you call it, Colonel? Mission, secret mission. Golly. Exciting, isn't it? Hmm? We have a message from him for his daughter. What was his name? Dane, a Colonel Dane. What? But that's ridiculous. Why? Why so ridiculous? Oh, no reason. Naturally, the communication being of a confidential nature, they would wish to speak to his daughter in private. Oh, gosh, yes. for the lift. Come on, Hill. You coming, Annie? It's all right, Hill. You go. I'm Alison Day. What an amazing coincidence. You recognize the resemblance, Brigadier General? I most certainly do. What's the message? Oh, the message? Oh, the message is very simple. Your father says that uh, when you were at the railway station on your way to school, he gave you something to keep for him, which now he would like you to give to me. What did he give me to keep? A, a little bag, was it not, Brigadier? Aye, something like that. I have no little bag. I think you have, my dear. Alison? Of course, I might have known such a daughter of an English gentleman would not give in so easily. We were putting you to the test, my dear, and you emerge with a flying color. Perhaps you will be ready to help us at some other time, if you have some proof of our identity. Hmm? Perhaps a letter from your father. Hmm? Be here in exactly one week from now, I'd better say three o'clock, and you shall have it. Your father sends his best regards. To Dubai. Do you not know that you must never, ever take lifts from strangers? Now, come along inside. I want to talk to you. So, what did this foreign gentleman say? He pretended he knew my father. 
mean you told him your name? He knew it already. Did he question you about your father? I told him nothing. Oh, Mr. Veen, I'm frightened. There is no need to be frightened. What safer place can exist than a school such as ours? One other thing. Did he at any stage mention me? Or a person called Stephen? No, he didn't. Stephen is my little brother. I have a nasty suspicion that the foreign-sounding gentleman is someone with whom we've been acquainted in the past, unfortunately. Now Stephen's disappeared from his school. But why are you telling me? Alison, between you and me, there exists a certain affinity, a certain bond. I had thought that your being for the moment fatherless and quite alone might understand. Oh, if only I could. Say nothing to the other girls. I simply cannot imagine how anyone as marvellous as Mr. Veen should have come to confide in me. But she did, Taddy, she did. I have definitely decided not to meet that awful man, though the deadline is today. But what if you really do know all about it and have given him some proof? I'm in such a quandary. Instead, I would be playing hockey. Everyone here is hockey mad. It's a big match this afternoon, the fourth form was against the fifth. And I've been asked to replace Maud, who has sprained her ankle. She'll be umpiring instead. I imagine it's quite an honor to be chosen for the team. I do hope I don't let them down. Wretched idol. Yes, if it had been anybody but darling Alison. Alison? What do you say? It was sticks, Maud. I'm sorry, I'm always doing it. Right. Golly, she's cracked. A regular duffer. Still, jolly sporting of Alison to concede like that. You are, you are. are. You are. <laughs> All right, girls. Penalty bully. <laughs> Mind your own business, Hillary. You don't want to be with any of us. Shut your face! Oh, that's so crazy. Oh, that's so right. Everyone in bed? What's the matter with her? She's upset about the match. She was the umpire, wasn't she? Pretty bad form running off like that. Oh, ignore her. She's only shamming. Is something wrong? No, no, no. Then pipe down. Oh, buzz off. You and all the rest of your stuck-up cronies, you're all the same. Ghastly. Maud Willison, two order marks. Now go to sleep, all of you. Serves you right, exactly. Lights on, all you fourth one feasters. Sorry, you're just like all the rest. All so cocksure with your lardy dow voices. Come on, Ali, there won't be any scoff left. I don't like your sort, Alison Dane. You're a toad. In fact, I hate you. Don't say things like that. Hate's a nasty word, Maud. But it's true. She thinks as if she carries on creeping up to Mr. Veen, she'll never get into trouble again. 
You're a toady, Alison. Do you hear? I am not a toady. All right, so prove it. Let's see you do something really bad for a change. These are strong words, Maud, even for you. Oh, are they really? Shut your mouth, snob face. I want to see what Miss Dane's really made of. Don't talk nonsense. Please, Maud. Nonsense? I'm not talking nonsense, you pole-faced jellyfish. I'm issuing a challenge. You mean a dare. I mean exactly that. Alison Dane, I dare you to go to that old haunted castle. But that's absurd, Maud. Are you for it, Hill? I'm game if you are. As game as can be. Hey, wait a minute. Yes, old thing? What about me? Maud's challenge was to me. Where do I fit in? You're the leader of the jolly little party. But I don't want to go. It's cold and I'm tired. And I've never heard a more stupid idea. You're joking, of course. No one can refuse an actual dare. Unless that person's a toady and little creep who's frightened she might get caught. to a girl who's quite simply got a chip on her shoulder and who thinks the whole world revolves around her. Buck up! We're having a stunning wheeze. Maud's an ass, but she's given us a pretty good excuse for an adventure. Tell us again what happened at the match. I saw those men at exactly the wrong moment. Must have completely put you off your stroke. It did. And Mr. Bean honestly knows them. I find that quite incredible. I only hope they are around here now. Or is that a light? Where? Where I can't see anything. Over there, through that little window. And it's flickering about. I'm off. No. Don't let's go. If there is anything spooky going on, I want to have a good look. Come on. doing here? The boy! How dare you behave like this? Release her at once! Not until I know who you are and where you've come from. We're from St. Ursula's School for Girls and we're on a dare. <sighs> who are you? Stephen Devine. Stephen Devine? Then you must be... Your headmistress's brother. How do you know Alison? She's been really worried about you. I ran away from school. Count Slansky and his chauffeur are after me. I tried to get in touch with my sister. They've been spying on St. Ursula's, and I daren't risk it. You know who I think he's talking about? Those men. Come on. We'll take you back. No, not yet. Well, if you won't, you won't. But we'll have to tell the head. She's not there, Annie. Don't you remember? Probably gone to see his headmaster. She won't be back till tomorrow night. You can't stay here all that time. 
I can. And I will. I suppose we ought to tell Miss Prosser. Oh, no! No, don't talk to anyone. It's vital and desperate you speak only to my sister. I'll wait till tomorrow night. Well, try to keep your lamp hidden, Stephen. That man will find you. What did you say his name was? Slansky. Count Slansky. Till tomorrow night, then. Good night. Try and keep warm. Good night, Stephen. Good night, and thank you. to notice it was missing. It certainly squeezed the truth out of us then. So, Alison Dane, you think to take advantage of your headmistress's absence? How dare you? How dare you? Never in my long years at this school have I encountered a more willful and disagreeable girl than you. I shall recommend your expulsion forthwith. Wait a minute, Miss Prosser. Alison wasn't the only one to be blamed. Don't be impertinent, madam. As for you others, punishment will be selected tomorrow afternoon on Mr. Veen's return. I am convinced that you cannot run a school under a system of martial law. <coughs> well, who suggested such a thing? This case is different. I'm speaking about a quite flagrant act of disobedience on the part of one girl... You may still yet be mistaken. I think not. I simply wish to state that I have my source of information. Then may I state that I am inclined to regard that source as shabby, if not despicable. Mr. Veen, unlike yourself, I have been in the teaching profession for nearly 32 years, and for 20 of those in this school. And never before have I had my authority flouted in such a manner. Oh, golly. I'm sorry, Miss Prosser, but I insist. I must be allowed to deal with this matter in my own way. Where are those wretched girls? Come in. Hilary, Jennifer, Alison. What can I do but express my utter disappointment? You must realize that a headmistress who finds one of her girls to be untrustworthy cannot from then on regard that girl as she does the others. Miss Prosser tells me that you, Alison, were the ringleader in this escapade. Oh, Mr. Veen, that isn't true. She didn't even want to go. Rubbish, girl. It is useless trying to protect your comrade. Miss Prosser, might not the ethics of schoolgirl honor fruitfully be left for discussion upon another occasion? All that remains is the choice of punishment. In view of the circumstances, I propose to place the three of you on silence week. Is that all? Certainly, that is all. Considering the nature of the misconduct, I think being forbidden to leave the grounds for seven days must be wholly appropriate. And girls, for seven days you will speak only amongst yourselves, to no other girl, for any reason, whatever. Miss Prosser, I must apologize. I have a splitting headache. You may all go. <laughs> it now. Well? Mr. Veen, firstly, we're most awfully sorry for what we did. I sincerely hope you are sorry. Not only because it's meant punishment, but you must know how your behaviour grieves me. But there's something else, something important. When we were at the old castle last night, we discovered a boy, and his name was Stephen Devine. Oh. Thank heaven. And he wants you to know that his life is in mortal danger. From someone called Count Slansky. Well, someone will have to fetch him. You, Ellie, 
You must do it. Oh, hell. Oh, yes, Annie, honestly. You were so kind to the boy and, and so level-headed about it. Do you want me to go now? Yes. Be as inconspicuous as possible. If you don't want him to be noticed, Stephen ought to be dressed just like Alison. Good idea. Wear your Macintosh and take another one for him. Be sure to lift up the hoods. Leave by the topiary garden. And on your return, come in by the tradesman's door. Anyway, it might not have been the same girl. Of course it was. You could see by the hair. All right. But I don't want you to disfigure a pretty face for nothing. Pig-headed, insurbordinate fool. For nothing? You call the Kayesh nothing? Oh, you'd think she'd talk. You'd get no more from her than you did from her father. Ah. She broke the bounds. Has she no shame? Has she no morals, whatever, that she could so flout authority? She shall be punished. Well, what's the good of that? She's been punished time after time, and what difference has it made? No. There's something repellent about her insolence that I cannot tolerate any longer. Come in. Ah. Oh. I must speak out. You are a contemptuous and 
Insolent hussy, madam. And I demand your expulsion forthwith. Certainly. When I know the facts. The facts? Do not the facts stare you in the face? If Alison is proved to have done wrong, I shall not hesitate to impose punishment of the greatest severity. She shall be expelled. If necessary, she shall be expelled. Then in the meantime, let her be removed from ordinary girls and made to sleep elsewhere. She shall remain apart in the old girl's wing. You have my word. Well, Alison, look! Stephen! In this very room, Mr. V went on to tell us something so incredible that even now I can hardly believe it. And so you see, Stephen, contrary to appearances, is not an ordinary English schoolboy. We are half Bosnavian, Stephen and I, and members of an ancient house. Our great uncle was the king of Bosnavia. King? When he became too old to govern, he appointed as regent Count Slansky. Under that evil man's regime, the people, needless to say, are in a state of revolt. They are at the end of their tether. They demand a new leader. Stephen here, as the only living male heir to the throne, must emerge and accept his duty. There's one problem. Since time immemorial, at the coronation, a certain ring has been placed upon the third finger of the monarch's left hand. And without it, there can be no ceremony. Until recently, this same magic ring was believed totally lost. The chocolates! The little box! been an ordeal for him. But you're safe now. It's him. It is the boy himself. So, what do you intend to do? Kill him. What? We've lost the ring, and time is running out. I'm going to kill the boy. Don't be stupid. Could have done that a dozen times over. Ah, but never to make it look like an accident. Get in there somehow. Go up there, lock the door. I don't know. It, it's all so sudden. I haven't really thought about it. Stephen, do you think I'm all those things Miss Prosser said? Oh, Alison. I think you're the nicest and the prettiest girl I've ever seen.
get help. Break down the door. Hurry, Mr. Grizzly! Save the Ursula's hurry! More water! an incredible night that was for all of us. You will be relieved to hear that the fire was brought under control and only a few rooms were seriously damaged. One of the heroes of the night was Maud, who manned the pump. In fact, all has ended very well for everyone. Everyone, that is, except me. Is long enough to turn into a book by now. Oh, it's just for Daddy, really. To make up for all the letters I never wrote. It really has been the most incredible turn. You've probably got the idea that school's always like this. You just wait till next year. When the work really starts. At least Prosy won't be here then. Poor old thing. I do feel sorry for her. She should never have submitted to that blind hatred, my angel one. Anyway, she did need a rest from us. I wonder what your Stephen's doing now. It's not my Stephen. He's nobody else's. I haven't noticed any of us being invited over to Bosnavia. I can't say I'm rapturous about him being king. He'd probably get terribly spoiled. But with a jolly old count stiff as a banana in his hospital bed, I can't see any other way out of it. And then you'll be queen. Hilary Marchant! Ali, Maud's got something to divulge. You tell her. No, go on. Don't be a goose. Alison, Miss Devine wants you in Carol practice right away. Would you please remain in your places until after your parents have left? I know you're longing to see them, but you'll be able to meet them afterwards, and I don't want a great scramble getting out of the chapel. Is that all right? Girls, I've already had occasion to thank Alison publicly for her unprecedented act of bravery in the recent fire. Alison. But for her inspired efforts, Bosnavia would now be deprived of its rightful king. 
All that is history. What none of you will know is the role that Alison's father, Colonel Harry Dane, has played in that poor country of mine. Acting under orders from our British allies, and together with the now hugely successful populist party, the Colonel has been engaged in a desperate struggle to regain control over a corrupt army and to establish a new elected government. Two days ago, I am delighted to report. This aim was finally achieved. And now, Alison, to the really thrilling news. Your father. You can be proud of your daughter, Harry. She's a true Dane. I shudder to think how she might have been a very dead true Dane, thanks to my stupidity on the railway platform. But what about you, Daddy? Did they hurt you trying to get that little box? They had a go on me on the London train, certainly. Didn't get much change, though. It was that chap with the camera that spoiled things. I suddenly realized what a fool deed I'd done. And when I heard on the grapevine that Slansky was coming over here by himself to collect the ring, I decided to offer the chap my personal services. But if you were with Slansky when he started the fire, why didn't you rescue me? I was coming to get you, girlie, then someone hit me over the head. When I woke up, the whole affair was over. It was Miss Prosser who locked the door. No. Where did you go afterwards? I had to slip quietly back to Bosnavia, darling. A lot of work to be done. But, Colonel Dane, couldn't you have stopped Slansky doing his fell act? Dashed awkward, actually, Hilary. I'd have had to kill him, which would have meant a furious row. Not a British prerogative, you know, to get so involved. Well, if it wasn't for what you revealed about the secret panel... You remember, Daddy, on the Manor lawn. Oh, golly, let's have no more of these spooky thoughts. All's well that ends well. Because, Ali, you'll be going home instead of having to spend Christmas with your poor old auntie. Anastasia, come with us. Come to the Manor for Christmas. I should be delighted to come to the Manor for Christmas, Colonel. <laughs> oh, Hill, isn't everything wonderful? Girls, girls, let's have three rousing cheers, three of the most ear-shattering yells, for the most sporting, the most ripping, the most perfect headmistress a school ever had. Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hooray!